To step on land, you need to be able to walk as well as breathe. And that was the next challenge to be met. Muddy streams are as good as anywhere to look for the evidence of those first creatures which began to make the move from water to land. Dr. Jennifer Clack from Cambridge University in England made a remarkable find in East Greenland. The fossil in this rock has been dated at 360 million years, and it belongs to an early tetrapod, creatures which developed limbs. Even more remarkable, it clearly has fingers. It's the first record of any animal with a hand and fingers. The creature is called Ancanthostega, and from the fossil, Dr. Clack has made detailed sketches of what she and other experts think the animal looked like. The tail appears to be made up from fins, more characteristic of a fish than a reptile. Looks like a fish, except it has limbs rather than fins. But its skull was stronger than the skull of a fish, and she believes it was able to move its neck. It evolved from fish that made their way into the fresh water and could breathe air when they had to for survival. But where the earlier fish had fins, it developed limbs. It was a strange creature, about a meter or three feet long. Until now, the fossil evidence had only ever revealed creatures with five fingers. It had eight. That was extraordinary, because previous to that, it had always been assumed that five digits was the primitive number and you couldn't have more than five. So that really got us thinking about the origin of limbs and it put a new spin on the whole story of where limbs came from and how they developed. Not much longer than here, but you've got that big sort of fleshy body around mm -hmm. full of muscles that, that move. To start with, she believed that the limbs had obviously evolved for it to walk on land. Detailed analysis of the skeleton ruled out that possibility. From the way that the limbs were joined to the body, they would not have been able to carry weight out of the water. Which is much longer than the other. You don't find that anywhere else. Again, not all, so... Mystery. But they, they certainly go back in uh, evolution to use an optron and, and things like that, because they'd had them. Um, they go back right to the beginning. The humerus and the radius and ulna are fixed at an angle that wouldn't allow the, the limb to, to bend like that. The, the articulations here and here suggest that the arm is, is carried sideways and that there's no weight-bearing function. They performed detailed skeletal analysis and then made a computer model of the creature. But this produced even more questions. The animal was able to wriggle its way forward through the water, almost as if it was swimming. But it would have been very slow without fins. So why hands with fingers? A possible answer came once again from Red Hill, the site of the first known forest.
Here is also evidence of rich and varied life in a freshwater lake. Dr. Ted Deschler from the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia has been working this is here. The thin spine of an acanthodian fish and made for a rigid pectoral fin. Yeah. Amongst other fossils, he has found one which gives a hint to the development of these fingers. It's a large tooth. This is a a single tooth of Hyneria. The other tetrapods, such as Acanthostega and Ichthyostega and a few others from around the world, also lived in these freshwater environments in the late Devonian, along with predators like Hyneria. And that may have been part of the pressure which made the early tetrapods specialize in shallow water, using their early rudimentary limbs to get into shallow water and swamps to escape predation. Hyneria would have been a ferocious hunter. Fossils indicate that it was covered with hard scales like armor and was a fast swimming predator, something to hide from. ferocious fish in the ecosystems at Red Hill. The body form in Hyneria is clearly an animal that was able to swim very quickly, start fast, chase its prey, grab its prey with huge teeth. On the contrary, the earliest limbed animals do not seem like they had the same kind of body plan to escape. So our ancestors in Hyneria was not a fair match. Perhaps the best answer to the arms race was to simply remain secretive and not attract attention. The earliest tetrapod animals seemed to change strategy to cope with the predation that Hyneria proposed. Instead of growing heavy armor like many of the other fish at the time, the earliest limbed animals escaped the predation by specializing in shallow water environments using their limb-like fins to move through shallow plant-choked waters that were a new ecosystem that they could exploit. When the early fish moved into fresh water, it was probably to escape its predators. But they also had primitive lungs and followed. see the limbs moving in three dimensions. Mm. Dr. Clack was intrigued by the so limbs this, of our early yeah. ancestor. Um, I would expect these bones to be moving backwards and forwards relative to the humerus, oh. which they don't seem to be doing. There are clues in a fish still swimming in Australian waters, the spotted handfish. It uses its slightly modified fins to clasp rocks on the sea floor or to wait in ambush for its prey. So a Canthostega might have been doing something similar in its swampy river. It could have been pushing aside reeds and undergrowth that you can't really do with fins. We see the environment as being monsoonal, similar in some ways to the Amazon rainforest. And you have to imagine a swamp-filled environment um, with lots of weedy undergrowth, as well as um, leaves falling in from the trees that lived on the riverbank.
The early trees, by chance, not only dropped their leaves, more often they dropped entire branches. These would pile up in the shallows and provide an ideal hiding place. To move through such a tangled pile of branches, hands with fingers would be very useful. Possibly this was the reason our ancestor developed limbs. Because these things were air breathing and they were living in perhaps stagnant water, they were using their hands as props to raise the head out of the water so that they could breathe the air. Chance has always seemed to play a part in evolution. Ultimately, once you've got these slightly um, intermediate types of adaptations that, that are adapted to neither land nor water, but a bit of both, then you can build on that uh, and gradually, over time, become adapted to, to um, more and more to land living properly. There was one more step to take. The creature that was first to walk on land would not be Ancanthostega. known footsteps on land are here on the west coast of Ireland. This was once a swamp, the foot of the Caledonian Mountains. These footprints were found in 1992. There were 260 steps made by an animal which put weight on the ground and moved its right and left feet forward alternately, like reptiles walk today. Those first footsteps may have been at night when it was cooler and safer. The earliest known animal to walk on land is called pedipes and came ashore perhaps 348 million years ago. first tentative steps across land were to change the earth forever. <laughs> 